19 road trip tips. I'm Chris, this is Topher, this is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining, and we have taken road trips all around the world. And so in this video, we're gonna be sharing with you some of the things we've learned on our road trips to make your next road trip the perfect one. Let's start with tip number one. My number one tip for a perfect road trip is to plan ahead. And yes, I know that some of the allure of a road trip is the freedom of the open road, you don't have tickets, you don't have times, you can go anywhere, you can stay anywhere. And so I'm not telling you that you need to plan everything, but what I am telling you is you should plan where you're going to spend the night and generally where you're going to have your meals, lunch and dinner. And I personally like to plan my whole road trip out. If it's a week long road trip before I go, I like to have all of my hotels booked or if I was camping, I'd want all of my campgrounds located and booked so that I know these are the places I'm gonna sleep at night. Cause if you don't book your hotels, well then you might end up sleeping in the Walmart parking lot in your car because that's the only place available. Also, taking a look at general areas for meals, you don't have to pick out specific restaurants, but at least looking at areas say, ah, this is a town that looks like it has food because otherwise you might find yourself driving and find that there are no restaurants for hours on your drive and you find that you are then very hungry. In addition to planning where you're gonna sleep and what you're gonna eat, you should plan out your route. I like to use Google Maps to plan out my route. That's a great way to tell what the driving time is. I would recommend though that you add about 20% to that driving time because you never know when there's gonna be traffic, a detour, or construction that's gonna make that route take a bit longer. And chances are you're sightseeing and so you'll want to stop, smell the flowers, check out the view, so it'll take you longer to drive it, assuming you're doing a road trip the right way. It's about the journey and not about the destination when you're road tripping. Tip number two, this is almost the opposite of tip number one, which is why I moved over here to talk about it on the other side of the camera. I just told you that successful road trips involve planning, but also don't plan too much. I find a big mistake of first time road trippers is detailing out their itinerary hour by hour, minute by minute. We're gonna go here, we're gonna eat here at 11.34, we're gonna do this. Don't do that, don't pack so much in your trip. You know, for a road trip, you wanna put in kind of a couple main things that you want to see and then you actually want the journey to be what you experience. If you see something on the side of the road, you want time built into your schedule to say, hey, let's just pull off and see what that is. So if you've done a leg of a drive and that drive is two hours, you know what? Maybe allocate four hours on that schedule and say, we're just gonna turn off, we're gonna find a cafe, we're gonna find a little hike and that's just what we're gonna do today and you know, by 6 p.m. we'll be at our destination. Tip number three is choose the correct vehicle. So depending upon what your road trip is, depending upon what kind of roads you'll be driving on, you will want a different type of vehicle. If you're just doing a whole bunch of freeway and road driving, then a sedan might be quite fine. By the way, if you're looking at this car in the background and you're like, Chris, is that your car? Is that the yellow car? That is the yellow car. And by the way, if you haven't heard the story about this yellow car, where that came from and how the name Yellow Productions came from as a channel, from that car, well, stay tuned. I'll tell you that at the end of the 19 tips. But some trips, you might not need a sedan. You might need an SUV because you might need a bigger car. You might be traveling on dirt roads, so you might need four wheel drive. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make on road trips is trying to take sedans, cars that were not meant to go off-road and taking them off-road. So make sure you're prepared with the right vehicle. You should also think about, do you wanna take your vehicle or do you want to take a rental vehicle? Is your vehicle old? Is your vehicle prone to breaking down? Well, rent one. We've often rented cars for road trips from rental car places that are in our home city. And finally, if you are taking your car, please get it serviced, get it checked up before you go on the road. You wanna make sure that all the bells and whistles and thingamabobs are working a-okay. Tip number four, get a roadside assistance plan. In the US, that could be AAA. Outside of the US, it could be something else, perhaps something you get through a rental car company or a different auto club, or even something you get through a premium credit card. When your car breaks down, not if, when, you will want to have the phone number handy so that you can call roadside assistance if your car is broken. If you're a really handy person, well then in that case, carry around tools, carry around your thing, fix it yourself. I am not a handy person. And so in that case, I like to have AAA. I like to have my Chase Sapphire preferred number handy so that if something happens to my car, I've got a flat tire, I need a jump, 
I know who to call. Now I told you I'm not handy, but the one thing I always carry in my car when I go on road trips is a cigarette lighter powered tire inflator. The number one thing that happens on trips is your tires get low or a nail gets in it. And if you can just give your tire enough air to get you to a tire store, that'll help out quite a bit and you won't need a tow. So consider getting one of these if you don't for your own car. Tip number five, you'll need maps. And don't just rely on your cell phone service to get you Google Maps all the time. If you are using Google Maps on your phone to navigate, then I recommend you download offline maps. But sometimes your phone dies, your phone goes in the water, something happens to your phone. If you're going on a serious road trip, invest in some paper maps. And if you don't wanna buy them, at least print them out so you have a general idea of where you are. But the great thing about actual paper maps, you know, the ones that you can unfold is it's a really great way to inspire detours. You can take a look at that map and say, yeah, you know what? We're going this way, but this road looks a lot more scenic. Let's go ahead and take that one. Now, if you are gonna be using your phone as a primary source of navigation, consider getting a cell phone mount for your car. I really like these cell phone mounts from Pl ProClip. They are made for specific phones. You can get them at ProClip USA. This is not sponsored. I just like them. Uh, if I'm traveling, then I use this one by iAudi. It's a suction cup one that you can stick on the dashboard. This one works reasonably well, but it's not as secure as the Pro Clip, which is actually designed to hard mount into your car so this thing doesn't go anywhere. One more note about those maps. Don't assume that all roads on maps are actually paved. Many of them are dirt roads, just like this. And if you end up on some place that seems a little too sketchy, don't be afraid to turn back. Turning back is much better than getting stuck. Next tip is road trips can be kind of boring on the open road. Make sure you've got your entertainment ready. Things like music, things like playlists, and don't just rely on streaming solutions because road tripping, you might end up someplace with no internet access, so download your music to your phone. Speaking of your phone and all those devices, make sure you bring something to actually charge your devices. Cigarette, lighter, powered USB chargers. I like ones from Anchor, they come in two ports. You can even get some that have four USB ports if you've got lots of devices. Tip number eight is about packing. Consider bringing some day bags that are small to bring up into your hotel room and leaving your big luggage in the car. Then you can take just the few things out that you need before you go to the hotel. Then you don't have to lug all your stuff every day or to the campground or the Airbnb or wherever you are staying. The next tip is you never wanna have anything showing in your car. You don't want any bags showing because thieves really love to break into cars from road trips because they're pretty valuable. I like to bring beach towels that I can put some stuff in the trunk but if I've got some stuff on the back seat then I use beach towels to just cover that stuff up now there's not a bag just looks like a beach towel and a bunch of junk going to the beach those picnic towels picnic towels the beach towels can also be pretty useful when you're going on a picnic speaking of picnicking and snacks Next tip is make sure you are prepared for snacks and drinks. I always like to carry a cooler on road trips. Really helps to uh, keep stuff cold. If you're staying in hotels that have ice machines, you can fill this up every night with ice. You can bring it up to your room, have your cold drinks, have your snacks in it, bring plenty of whatever you like, Doritos, veggies, you know, your thing, and your drinks in here. But it might be hard to get your drinks always out of your cooler, so to drive around and keep drinks hot or cold, I like these cups by Tervis, particularly because this one's yellow. But what I like about these, I like that I can put a straw in it, they don't unscrew, and so it makes it really easy hmm, to drink from this while you're driving keeps things cold for a long time, keeps them hot for a long time too. And did I mention they come in yellow? Tip number 11, have your box of sanitary supplies. I'm shooting this during the COVID-19 pandemic and so sanitary supplies right now, definitely some hand sanitizer. You'll need that on a road trip, sanitize your hands. If you can't wash them, <clears throat> also a potpourri of masks. Chris, I got like this whole mask box depending upon any situation. I might wanna be Winnie the Pooh, I might want my medical mask, or if I'm going to someplace really sketchy, then I've got my N95 mask. I see many people just put their masks up on the rear view mirror, but I find that really annoying when I'm driving 
what just happened right there, it can happen, your mask can fly away. And so it's good to have a few masks just in case that happens. You don't want your only mask to have flown away. And then you're maskless and you can't go into a store to buy a new mask. Now, in addition to the mask box, I typically carry a second box that didn't make it with me in this car today, but that has things like paper towels, utensils. If I'm gonna eat someplace, I need utensils to eat in the car. It'll also have uh, wet wipes in case there's a spill. Just the general basics of cleaning supplies you might need, including a plastic bag for trash, because if something happens in your car and you need to wipe that up and there's not a trash can, it's good to have a plastic bag to put that messy stuff in. Tip number 12, carry a bag of small change coins and bills. These are really useful for tolls if you have to pay tolls, useful for parking meters. So pick this up before your trip. Oh, and by the way, did I mention also to carry a bag of plastic gloves? Really useful if you're going to a sketchy gas station or you need to do something that you don't want to get your hands dirty. Tip number 13, if you're traveling internationally, make sure to take a look at those requirements in that international country. See if you need an international driving permit in addition to your driver's license. One country that requires requires this is Japan. If you're going to Japan and you're a resident of the USA, you need to get an international driver's permit to go along with your driver's license. You can get those at your nearest AAA office in the US. Tip number 14, if you're traveling in the winter and you're traveling in snow, make sure you have snow supplies too. In particular, you will want an ice scraper to scrape your windshield. Most rental car companies in cold places will give those to you. If you're going someplace that's really snowy, consider getting a snow broom, which is basically something to take all the snow off your car in the event that it's covered in it. Tip number 15, let's talk about scheduling. I like to schedule my drives so that they're in the day. Daytime driving is the safest and it's the easiest. I like to leave my sleeping destination around 9 a.m after rush hour, you know, have a leisurely breakfast, drive around, and then I like to get to my destination by sunset, get there, and then do things in that destination in the evening. I particularly require myself to get to any destinations by the time the drunks come out on the road, you know, because my mom always said nothing good happens after midnight. Also, if you're gonna be traversing big cities, make sure that when you're going through those big cities isn't rush hour in those cities. In the US, if you were going through Los Angeles, that could be one hour during normal traffic times or three hours if you hit that at 5 p.m. on a Friday night. Tip number 16, obey the rules of the road in whatever your destination is. If you're going to a foreign country, look those up before. And I also highly encourage you to drive the speed limit. I know many of us might be speed demons and like to go pretty fast, including myself, but when I'm someplace that I'm not familiar with in a place that I might not even speak the language, which even in the US might be a different place like being in the South where they speak in different accents. I drive the speed limit because I don't wanna give them any extra reasons to pull me over and that time getting pulled over is just time away from your actual vacation. Tip number 17, fill up your gas frequently. On road trips, when my gas tank gets to about a half tank, I usually like to fill it up again because you never know when the next gas station's gonna be. And so if you're passing a decent gas station that looks clean and is relatively inexpensive, stop there and fill it up because you know one's there. Also, I'd encourage you to use the toilet frequently uh, and at least traveling in the US, I often prefer truck stops over gas stations. I find truck stops in the US are actually these pretty big impressive places that generally prioritize clean bathrooms. Uh, in Europe, rest stops are actually pretty good. You might often have to pay a dollar or something like that to use them. There you might be a euro, uh, but make sure you use the toilet when you have the option because you also don't know when the next toilet's gonna be. Tip number 18, clean your car frequently. You know, road trips have a way of making your car pretty dirty. Make sure you clean it not just on the outside, but also at the inside. Gas stations are pretty good places to do that. Keep your windshield clean, dump out your trash. Tip number 19, is to take exercise breaks. You know, when you get to those stops, you get to a rest stop, something like that, you get to a little city, you know, every couple hours, get out, take a walk for 15 minutes, your back will thank you later. Hey Topher, do you know what time it is? It's story time, and it's time for us to tell the story of what this yellow car has to do with the Yellow Productions channel. It's actually the inspiration for the channel name, but this is not my first yellow car. My first yellow car was actually a 1986 Honda, a car that did not come in yellow. It was originally silver, but uh, when I was 16 years old, I got into an accident with a drunk driver. This drunk driver hit the side of my car, uh, and my car 
was totaled, uh, but actually I was able to go to some cheap body shops where they repaired the car, but then they put on panels from two other cars. So I had a silver car with a red door and a blue back panel while well, I needed to get my car painted. So I took my car to One Day Paint, a paint shop, and when I was at this paint shop, I was looking at the paint board saying, what color should I paint my car? And having just got into an accident with a drunk driver, I said yellow. Yellow was the color of my car. And I loved that yellow car because it was so easy to find in parking lots and anywhere. I would never lose that car. Uh, and so when I was buying a new car in 2004 is when I bought this car. I specifically went on cars.com and I looked for yellow cars. And I saw there was one yellow Lexus IS300. That's right, this is a yellow Lexus. Lexus only made uh, IS300s in yellow for two years, 2002 and 2003. And driving a yellow car around, uh, people that I knew and my friends, they would just start to call me yellow. I would drive up instead of people saying, hey Chris, they would say, hey yellow. And people called me yellow after a while. And so then when I decided to start a YouTube channel, I called it Yellow Productions. When I went to register domain names, well, you know, one W was taken, so I put two W's in there. Eventually, I decided that was a mistake because if you type in two W's into YouTube, well, YouTube thinks you misspelled it and corrects it to one W. So some point later in the channel, I renamed it to Yellow Productions with a single W, but that's why sometimes you see Yellow Productions written with one W, and sometimes you see it written with two W's. It's often on my older shirts, this one, one of my newer shirts. And the last thing to know is we've got more videos. If you enjoyed watching this one, you might enjoy checking out some of our other excellent travel videos. You'll find videos up on the screen or links in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next video. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong way. I wanna go that way. <laughs>